Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to be talking about what to do if your balloon does not deflate. So uh, we have a previously healthy 50-year-old man with an inferior STEMI who uh, presented with chest pain uh, while shoveling snow. The culprit is a 100% thrombotic occlusion of the proximal RCA and looks like a fairly straightforward uh, bread and butter STEMI or so we think. The uh, case started out innocently enough. Uh, we easily crossed the fresh thrombus uh, with a BMW wire. And after predilation, the RCA turns out to be quite large uh, with an ulcerated uh, ruptured plaque uh, clearly visible proximally. We uh, deployed a 4.5 millimeter DES in the large RCA and the 4.5 millimeter stent actually looked a little bit undersized. So uh, we went ahead and post-dilated with a 5.0 millimeter uh, non-compliant balloon. We went up for 30 seconds, but then the balloon wouldn't come down. Uh, we try again. Still, the balloon would not deflate. The patient's ST segments are going back up. His chest pain is getting worse. What do we do now? So a uh, non-deflating balloon is an extremely rare uh, complication. Um, the first thing you do uh, is to try again uh, with a new inflator and stopcock system. The idea is that your old inflator could have had uh, micro cracks and leaks uh, that is uh, preventing it from building up sufficient vacuum uh, to, to draw out the contrast uh, from the inflated balloon. Step two, uh, if uh, switching to the uh, new inflator and stopcock uh, does not work, uh, the second thing to try is to change uh, the fluid uh, to pure saline in the inflator and then infuse the saline into the non-deflated balloon, so actually thereby inflating the balloon more, and then attempt again to deflate. Uh, you may need to repeat this process uh, several times. Um, the idea here is that there could be a kink in the balloon catheter shaft or defect uh, blocking the contrast in the balloon from coming out. Now, contrast is very viscous, so if you can dilute it with saline, then the diluted contrast may have an easier time getting past the kink or the defect and thereby allowing the balloon to deflate. If uh, using saline doesn't work, uh, the next step is to try to rupture uh, the balloon. Uh, the simplest way to do this is this in step 3A, where you rupture the balloon by just inflating the balloon well beyond burst pressure. Generally, you'll need 30, uh, more than 30 atmospheres uh, to uh, burst the balloon. Uh, uh, remember to have a covered stent ready in case balloon rupture causes a perforation in the vessel. Now, of course, this method assumes that the balloon shaft is not so kinked or defective that you can actually still um, inflate the balloon. But what if your balloon catheter shaft is so kinked or defective that you cannot inflate the balloon? Or what if your inflator can't achieve high enough pressure to rupture the balloon? Well, then you have to resort to uh, using a stiff wire uh, to physically puncture the balloon. But how do you do this as safely as possible? You certainly don't want to have to deal with a wire perforation at this point. So there are a couple of techniques uh, to puncture an inflated coronary balloon as safely as possible. The first technique uh, which is useful if your balloon is proximal in the vessel, is to use a guide liner. So you first cut the shaft of your non-deflating balloon and advance a guide liner over the cut balloon shaft into the vessel. You have to advance the guide liner all the way and wedge it against the non-deflating balloon. You then pass your stiff wires via the guide liner to the balloon. And the idea here is that the uh, guide liner will help guide your stiff wires directly uh, to the balloon and minimize the chance of accidental wire perforation. You try uh, to puncture first with your uh, heavy CTO wires, uh, such as the Confianza Pro, the Hornet 14, the Estado 40, or you can even try uh, peripheral wires. If these fail, uh, then you can try the sharp uh, back end of a coronary wire. Um, if your non-deflating balloon is too distal uh, for a guy liner, then you can use uh, OTW balloon, over-wire balloon. In this technique, you first pass a long body wire to the non-deflating balloon. 
You then advance an OTW balloon, which is uh, size one to one uh, to the uh, diameter of the vessel uh, over the body wire. And then you wedge the tip of the OTW balloon against uh, the non-deflating balloon. Then uh, you inflate the OTW balloon to nominal pressure and pass your heavy wires uh, via the OTW balloon uh, to puncture the non-deflating balloon. The idea here is that uh, uh, the use of the OTW balloon will help guide your uh, stiff uh, wire to the non-reflating balloon. And inflating the OTW balloon helps to center the puncturing wire in the vessel while also providing stronger backup uh, for uh, the wire puncture step. Uh, a similar technique is sometimes used uh, for puncturing stiff proximal caps uh, in uh, CTO PCI. Okay, so for our patient, it turned out that trying a new endoflator and trying saline in the endoflator were both uh, ineffective. Uh, but thankfully, uh, the balloon was uh, successfully ruptured uh, by inflation uh, at 34 atmospheres. Um, so we did not need to try uh, the uh, wire puncturing techniques. The um, final angiographic result was quite satisfactory. And fortunately, there was no perforation or dissection or no reflow. And uh, there was a TIMI-3 flow throughout. All right, uh, so take home messages. Um, a failure, uh, failure of balloon deflation is a very rare uh, complication. It could be due to a defective or sometimes a kinked uh, balloon uh, catheter shaft. So if you badly kink your balloon catheter shaft while advancing it, uh, you might consider just calling for a new balloon. But if you run into a situation where your balloon fails to deflate, uh, remember this approach. Step one, uh, try again uh, with a new endoflator stopcock system. Step two, uh, switch to saline in the inflator, infuse the saline into the balloon to decrease the viscosity of the contrast in the balloon, and then try to deflate again. Step 3A, try to rupture the balloon by inflating it beyond burst pressure. Uh, usually more than 30 atmospheres are required, and obviously have a covered stent ready uh, in case of uh, vessel perforation. And step 3B, try puncturing the balloon with a stiff wire or the back end of a coronary wire. Remember to use a guideliner or an inflated OTW balloon uh, to minimize the chance of uh, wire perforation. Uh, finally, if all else fails, uh, you'll need to uh, put in mechanical circulatory support and call for surgical uh, removal. Thank you for watching.